It's day number seven of the 12 days of MLB rankings, and I'm excited to bring you the best player from every Major League Baseball team at the center field position today. I gotta say, there might be some surprises that you weren't expecting in today's video. You're gonna have to watch it to find out, but there's been a little bit of a shakeup at the top of today's rankings. So as always, if you guys do enjoy what you're watching over here, make sure you leave a like on it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you. Because remember, on Christmas Day, I'll be dropping the top 50 players in all of Major League Baseball. It's an absolute banger. You're gonna wanna watch that. Remember to comment down below what you're thinking of my rankings, give me your opinion, and follow me on my social media, at GiraffeNickMark, links are in description. Without further ado, let's go into the center field rankings. In today's video, started at number 31 is the projected Padres center fielder, I guess, Jose Azokar. Yeah, I don't think they really have anybody there right now. Azokar has played 153 games in the last two seasons with the Padres, two homers, 15 doubles, 19 RBIs, stealing 13 bases, hitting 249 with a 292 on base, 341 slugging, and a 633 OPS for an OPS plus of 81. Yeah, uh, this is just because they have nobody, so Azokar a car gets a start at the bottom. Next up at the number 30 spot, I've got Miles Straw of the Cleveland Guardians. Yeah, I don't really care how good defensively Miles Straw is. At the plate, there's just like little to nothing that's even just like valuable at all. Second straight season of an OPS plus below 70. One home run, 18 doubles, three triples. He only stole 20 bases as well. Hit 238 with a 301 on base, 297 slugging for an OPS at 597. This is Miles Straw. That's a guy who plays center field. Great glove, but like literally that's it. Oakland A's center fielder up next at number 29. That's of course going to be Esteuri Ruiz. Esteuri uh, was a weird player. He obviously stole 67 bases, the most in the American League. That's his game. He's a speed demon, but he doesn't really hit that well. Doesn't really play great center field defense, which is confusing because he's a great athlete, but on the year, five homers, 24 doubles, 47 RBIs with those 67 stolen bases, hitting 254 with a 309 on base, 345 slugging and a 654 OPS for an OPS plus 88. I got to imagine the defense thing like might turn around because he's just so incredibly fast. If he could ever hit, this ranking will change, but for now, he's towards the bottom. For the 28th best center fielder in Major League Baseball, I'm going to go with Jake Myers of the Houston Astros. Right now, Myers is the projected center fielder for the Astros. Again, another guy I don't think is really going to be the starter this season. Fits more in a backup platoon depth role. Myers last year, I guess maybe had the best season of his career. 112 games, 10 homers, 16 doubles, 33 RBIs, hitting 227 with a 296 on base, 382 for a 678 OPS and an OPS plus 86. Solid in center field. That's just kind of it though. He's a good depth guy. Gotta be the weirdest player in today's video. At number 27, I've got Brenton Doyle of the Colorado Rockies. Brenton Doyle, this is what you care about. Sick in center field defensively, like he graded by and large as the best defensive center fielder in baseball. Here's the catch. At the plate was the worst. It's really not even close. While he did hit 10 home runs, 16 doubles, 5 RBIs, that's just kind of a product of playing as much as he did in Coors. He hit 203 with a 250 on base, 343 slugging, and a 593 OPS for an OPS plus at 52. Won the gold glove, but he struck out 35% of the time, walking 5% of the time. Just really couldn't hit a lick, and I don't really think he's ever going to hit. So, Brenton Doyle, number 27. Just outside the top 25, at number 26, I've got Kyle Isbell, center fielder for the Kansas City Royals. Isbell has an absolute cannon of an arm, hose piece. In center field, he's actually a pretty good defensive player out there, but but again, just like a, towards a lot of these guys at the bottom of the list, they're not complete players. So while he does have the glove on the arm, doesn't have much of a bat. 240 average, 282 on base, 380 slugging for a 662 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus an 80, which again, anything under 100 is below league average. So he was 20% worse than league average. Not a lot of pop in that bat. Wasn't really stealing bases. Should be his position right now, but I don't know what the ceiling is. Can the top 25 start at number 25, Victor Robles. Due to injuries and whatnot last year, Victor Robles only played in 36 games. So it's not really that great of a sample to look at. Instead, I'm basically going to look at his last 162 in which he has six homers, 15 doubles, 41 RBIs, stealing 23 bases, hitting 241 with a 299 average, 324 slugging, and a 623 OPS for an OPS plus at 79. Another guy with a pretty good glove in center field, a cannon. He's a good athlete. I just like him because he's a little bit younger and we've seen him play better at times, but there's just not a lot right now with Victor Robles that makes me excited. For the 24th best center fielder in Major League Baseball, Chicago Cubs projected center fielder Mike Talkman. The Sockman making it onto today's video simply because the Cubs don't really have a center fielder. The Sockman was fine. Of course, in center field defensively, grades, whatever. At the plate, he was about a league average hitter. We've seen him probably be a decent outfielder at times before, and we've seen that bat be really good like it was in 2019 with the Yankees. But overall, I mean, he's a pretty average player across the board. 252 average, does get on base a ton though. 263 on base, 377 slugging for a 739 OPS and an OPS plus at 100. Fielding is important, I know. Getting on base is important, I know. There's a bunch of things that go into these rankings, and honestly, I just prefer I'd rather 
rather have Mike Talkman than any of these guys on the list underneath him. Keep that in mind when you're watching. You might say like, oh, this guy was better last year, but I prefer Talkman over Kyle Isbell any day, at least for the next season. Jordan number at number 23, Parker Meadows, center fielder for the Detroit Tigers. Parker Meadows, big boy, 6'5", playing center field. I mean, what a freak. Got called up last year as a 23-year-old and looked decent. Three homers, four doubles, 13 RBIs, and eight stolen bases in 37 games. Hitting 232 with a 331 on base, 368 slugging for a 699 OPS for an OPS plus at 92. Again, projects to be the center fielder. Riley Green's probably going to right. That makes the most sense. Didn't really see enough to make a huge judgment of Parker Meadows, but I think this is kind of a fair spot to throw him into. For the 22nd best center fielder in Major League Baseball, Alec Thomas of the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'll tell you something. The projections love Alec Thomas next year. They think he's going to have a really solid season, and he has shown flashes of being a plus player before. Defensively, obviously good, but overall in the year, the OPS plus being 75, yeah, that's just not good enough, but I get it. Like, projections-wise, he actually might be pretty decent. Nine homers, 17 doubles, five triples, and 39 RBIs last year. He's almost had identical numbers in his two seasons at the major league level. I mean, you're looking at 230 average, 274 on base, 359 slugging, 633 OPS in his career. Hasn't been great, but again, another one of these young center fielders who I definitely am not giving up on yet. Next up at number 21 is Johan Rojas of the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, Rojas will probably end up platooning a little bit in center field at some point this season, but again, projected center fielder. Last year at times, he looked really good. But again, it's a little bit of popcorn muscles, not necessarily totally repeatable. I'll still give him some credit though. He hit 300 with the 340 on base, 430 slugging, 771 OPS for an OPS plus at 111, but he struck out 25% of the time, only walked 3% of the time. The baseball savant stack has numbers don't necessarily love Johan Rojas, but I will say this. He's been a prospect that was in the Phillies org that I've liked for a while. I bought some of this guy's cards. I actually think he can be a very good player. I just need to see it for more than a 60 game sample with some sustained success before I throw him up a little bit higher. I normally don't do this because he hasn't played a game at the major league level, but coming in at number 20 is going to be Brewers center fielder Jackson Chorio. The reason I do it is because Chorio is playing center field. They gave him a major league contract. He will be playing there every single day. He is currently 19 years old. He'll just be 20 when opening day comes around. He's one of the best young talents in the game. Freak in center field athletically. At the plate, he has a ton of pop. Hit 22 homers and 26 doubles with 91 RBIs and 44 stolen bases last year as a 19-year-old splitting time between mostly double A and triple A. Gonna hit for a decent average. Not much of an eye at the plate. Like, not a huge walk guy, but he hits the ball hard, gets on base, plays good defense. I really do think he could be a top 20 center fielder next season. For the 19th best center fielder in Major League Baseball, Kevin Kiermeyer, current free agent. Kiermeyer, just always a solid center fielder. Won a gold glove again last year with the Blue Jays. And offensively, it was actually one of his better years. 129 games, eight homers, 21 doubles, six triples, and 36 RBIs. Hitting 265 with a 322 on base, 419 slugging, and a 741 OPS for an OPS plus at 104. There's definitely a lot to be desired with Kevin Kiermeyer, but really, like in a loaded team with a great lineup, wow, would love to have this guy playing center field because he's just so awesome out there. Just ever so slightly ahead of him at number 18 is going to be one of my favorite former prospects, Jaron Duran. Duran did not grade particularly well in center field this past year, but again, he's such a good athlete. I'm going to give him like just a little bit of a break here because I know what I've seen and there's been good stuff. There's been bad as well. I also love his bat. 102 games, eight homers, 34 doubles. It's just so many. 40 RBIs with 24 stolen bases, only getting caught twice. Great efficiency. 295 average, 346 on base, 482 slugging for an 828 OPS and an OPS plus at 121. Some of the better offensive value numbers that we're going to see at this position in this kind of middle of the pack, but defensively is where he lags behind the others, which is why I really couldn't get too aggressive with him and kept him at 18. For the 17th best center fielder in Major League Baseball, I'm going to go with Jose Siri of the Tampa Bay Rays. Another guy who's probably going to end up platooning, but I mean, if he does play every day, he actually did some stuff last year that was really eye-opening, like hitting 25 home runs in 100 games. Like, I'm sorry, what? Now, he doesn't hit for average. He doesn't get on base, but he was a power guy and he plays good defense in center field. So for those reasons, I put Jose Siri a little bit towards the middle of the pack. I'm sorry, I'm a sucker for home runs. And Jose Siri did that with good defense. Right at the halfway point here, number 16, Tommy Edmond of the St. Louis Cardinals. I don't really know what to think about Edmond. Sometimes they play him at second, sometimes they play him in center field. It's hard to really project, but right now, Fangraphs has him in center field. Offensively, he probably just realistically is, at best, a league average hitter. Defensively in center field, it's not going to be great. It's not his best position. But he does enough of the little things to at least be a very serious serviceable center fielder at the major league level. Not someone I'm requesting. You're like, gotta go get Tommy Edmond, put him in center field, but a career slash line of like 265, 319, 408, 726 with an OPS plus at 100 for his career. That's literally league average. Put him right in the middle of the rankings. Next up at number 15, I've got Leody Tavares of the Texas Rangers. Leody had some ups and downs last year. Got hot, got cold. Overall, I think he's a very solid player. Again, hitting towards the bottom of that order for the Rangers is perfect. Plays a great center field. Extra base hit machine. 14 homers, 31 doubles last year. is pretty solid. Was 67 RBIs, hitting 266 with a 312 on base, 421 slugging, and a 733 OPS.
OPS for an OPS plus at 97. He's only 25 years old. We've seen him improve now. I like what Leody Tavares is doing, especially because there's just no pressure on this guy to be him. I do think he's like a really solid player. Jack Sawinski of the Pittsburgh Pirates is up next, coming in at number 14. Sawinski is like someone who a lot of traditional baseball fans will probably be like, how is he ranked so high? And the nerds will be like, Sawinski's a god. What do you mean? Stackcast loves him. Hits the ball hard, plays good defense, runs fast, like barrels. That's what you want. Hard hit good athleticism, good defense. Now, the old school people would be like, he hit 224. Like, what's that all about? He's not a big contact guy. Struck out 32% of the time last year, but he did walk 14% of the time with 26 homers, 21 doubles, 74 RBIs, and 13 stolen bases, and finished with an OPS just under 800 at 793, OPS plus 115. That puts him in the top half of center fielders in baseball for sure. At number 13, I went with my Crohn's brother, Cedric Mullins, who has definitely had some down years since that major breakout in 2021, but still is a very serviceable center fielder and played great defense this past season. Realistically, he's not going to be a 30-30-30 guy anymore. It just doesn't seem like that's going to be in the cards for Cedric Mullins. I know he dealt with some injury stuff this year. But you're looking at a guy more realistically who's going to be like 20 homers, 30 doubles, 30 stolen bases. The power is probably not 30 home run level. Last year was weird. Hit 233 with a 305 on base, 416 slugging, 721 OPS for an OPS plus at 101. But the combination of all the things that we've seen over the last three seasons makes me believe that he is still one of the better center fielders in the game. Shout out to Campbell Camels. Maybe a little aggressive projecting here, but at number 12, I've got Jazz Chisholm of the Miami Marlins. After a bit of a rough start in center field at the beginning of the year, Jazz really turned it around. It was actually phenomenal defensively the second half of the season when he was healthy again. And at the plate, we know he has the potential to be electric. He just hasn't really ever played a full season. Need him to be healthy. Need him to stay on the field. He could be magical. 19 homers, 12 doubles, 51 RBIs with 22 stolen bases in 97 games. Hitting 250 with a 304 on base, 457 slugging, and a 761 OPS for an OPS plus at 103. While learning a completely new position, Jess Chisholm had a great season and I'm excited to see what he can do in 2024. Just don't kill the Mets too much, please. Like, you can stink against them. Be good against the rest of the NL East. Just missing out on the top 10 at number 11, I've got Jung-Hoo Lee of the San Francisco Giants. For those of you who don't know, the Giants signed a KBO superstar by the name of Jung-Hoo Lee, and he's going to be their everyday center fielder. I'm being a little aggressive with where I'm ranking him, but truthfully, based on his projections and what we've seen, at what is relatively a weaker position, I do think he is borderline top 10 going into the season. At the KBO, he's always been a contact god. I mean, a guy who has a 340 career rear batting average in the KBO with a 400 on base, 491 slugging, and an 898 OPS. He's not going to hit a lot of home runs. He's not going to drive in a lot of runs, but he's going to play good defense, good speed, and elite contact, along with getting on base. That, to me, sounds like a borderline top 10 center fielder. Because getting the top 10 started at number 10 is someone who I think kind of plays similarly to Jung Hoo Lee, just in a little more friendly of a hitter ballpark. That's going to be TJ Friedel of the Cincinnati Reds. Friedel quietly had an awesome year last year, and I want to give him some love. I want to give him some props. 138 games, 18 homers, 22 doubles, eight triples with 66 RBIs, stealing 27 bags, hitting 279 with a 352 on base, 467 slugging for an 819 OPS, OPS plus at 118. Friedel is just straight up one of the more underrated center fielders in Major League Baseball. Quietly great season, all around really good. If you're a Giants fan, I think you hope he kind of turns into TJ Friedel in terms of what he did last year. You'd be pumped with that. And Reds fans, you got a top 10 center fielder, at least in my opinion. For the ninth best center fielder in Major League Baseball, dropping a bit, I've got Byron Buxton of the Minnesota Twins. Weirdly enough, it's Byron Buxton's birthday when I'm recording this. Happy birthday to you, Byron. Just turned 30. Oof, I feel like he's been around forever now. Buxton did not have a particularly good season last year, of course. Had the injury bug going around again. Has not played 100 games in a season since 2017, and I gotta punish him for it. That being said, when he does play, he's electric. The power is, like, legit good. 17 homers and 17 doubles in 85 games, but the slash line was bad with a two 207 average, 294 on base, 438 slugging with a 731 OPS. Buxton has that top tier talent. He's going back to center field because he did not like DHing last year. And obviously in the field, he is elite. Like there's not going to be many better center fielders than him at that position, but he doesn't stay healthy. So I had to bump him down a few spots. Newcomer to the list at number eight, I've got James Outman of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Outman's a really solid ball player. Now there definitely are some holes in his game, like the fact that he strikes out like crazy. But after what was a hot start to his career, followed by a bit of a tough medium zone in the middle of the season, he got crazy hot in the second half. 264 average, 393 on base, 458 slugging with an 851 OPS. That was really good. And he finished the year overall with a 790 OPS, OPS plus at 112. And in terms of center field OAA, he was 12th overall with 8 OAA. Like, he's a very good center fielder. A lot of good things to like with James Outman. Just got to watch that strikeout rate, but otherwise, very solid player. For the seventh best center fielder in Major League Baseball, current free agent, probably will sign soon, that's going to be Cody Bellinger. Bellinger is back, but in a different way. He's not really hitting those 40 plus home runs like we saw in his MVP season. Gave up a little bit of power to be an elite contact hitter, and that's what he was last year. Hitting 307 with a 356 on base, 525 slugging, and an 881 OPS for an OPS.
OPS plus at 133. 26 homers, 29 doubles, 97 RBIs with 20 stolen bases. The walk rate was at 7%. He cut the strikeout rate to 15%, which is disgusting. I'm just not being as aggressive as maybe I would like because we are coming off of two absolutely horrendous seasons with the Dodgers before that. But I have all the faith in the world that Cody Bellinger will be a top center fielder in the game for many, many years. Really excited with what I saw last year. Just not put him in the top five just yet because it's been a minute since we saw him play that well. Just missing on the top five at number six, I've got Michael Harris of the Atlanta Braves. Michael Harris, just all around, a really good player. Defensively in center field, solid, 7 0 AA. At the plate, gonna hit for average. Doesn't really walk a lot, so that's like the one kind of blemish on his game is he is not someone who's gonna get on base outside of when he gets hits, but he hits at such a high rate that it's okay. 477 slugging, 808 OPS for an OPS plus at 114. Not as good as his rookie of the year season. He had some more struggles, but to see him at 22 years old now, put together two seasons of an 800 OPS, you can make an argument this guy is a top five center fielder in the game. And honestly, I wouldn't hate it if you did. He's really good. Cannon of an arm. Michael Harris is a stud. That being said, getting the top five start at number five, I have Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets, who I do think is slightly better than Michael Harris. And the numbers would back it up. Offensively, he has been just a little bit better the last couple seasons. And defensively, Brandon Nimmo is also pretty solid. I won't pretend like he's better in center than Michael Harris, but he's still good. We saw the best season of Brandon Nimmo's career, arguably last year, 152 games. He was healthy, 24 homers, 30 doubles, six triples, and 68 RBIs from the leadoff spot with the Mets, hitting 274 with a 363 on base, 466 slugging for an 829 OPS, and OPS plus at 127. For his career, Brandon Nimmo has a 130 OPS plus, yet people still don't throw respect on this guy's name. He gets on base, he's hitting for power, he plays good center field defense. Brandon Nimmo is a top five center fielder. Get over it. Cry in the comment section. You're mad you don't have Brandon Nimmo, dude. For the fourth best center fielder in the game, I gotta go with Luis Robert of the Chicago White Sox. I say this every year. I'm not gonna call him Luis Robert. There's just no way that a Cuban is going by Robert. I don't care how it's spelled. I don't care what the announcers say. There's video of him saying Robert. Besides the fact, uh, he's a sick player. He had a crazy good year last year. 145 games, 38 homers, 36 doubles, 80 RBIs with 20 stolen bases, hitting 264 with a 315 on base, 542 slugging, and an OPS at 857 with an OPS plus at 120 with no protection in that lineup with a stupid organization like the White Sox. Luis Robert is so, so good. La Pantera is one of the best center fielders in the game. One of my favorite players in the league. Elite with the glove too, by the way, in case you didn't know that already. Next up at number three, I've got J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. Oh, J-Rod is so good. J-Rod is him. I can't believe I got to interview this kid when he was like 18 years old, and now he's one of the best players in baseball. Finished fourth in the MVP voting as a 22-year-old for the Mariners. 155 games, 32 homers, 37 doubles, 103 RB RBIs with 37 stolen bases, hitting 275 with a 333 on base, 485 slugging for an 818 OPS and an OPS plus at 128. Oh yeah, and defensively, he was fourth in Major League Baseball in terms of OAA among center fielders at 12. That's three behind Brenton Doyle, one behind Kevin Kiermeyer, and those guys can't hit at all. Where J-Rod is a stud. He's just so good all around. Mariners fans, you're so lucky you got this guy for the foreseeable future. One of the best players in the league. For the first time ever, coming in at number two at his position, I've got Mike Trout of the Los Angeles Angels. Oh, I felt dirty saying it, but I got to do it to Trout. It's not that he's not good. It's not that he's gotten worse, really. It's that he just hasn't played a healthy season since 2019. And because of that, We've now seen his game go down a little bit. It's still disgustingly good, but he doesn't play enough to make that kind of decrease in his production worth it as much. Still though, I mean, in 82 games last year, 18 homers, 14 doubles, 44 RBIs, hitting 267 with a 367 on base, 490 slugging, and 858 OPS for an OPS plus at 131. That's the worst season of his career, guys. 131 OPS plus with an 858 OPS. Like Mike Trout is still just absolutely disgusting. Still one of the best players in the game. It's just I don't think he can hold the crown right now as the best center field anymore because coming in at number one New York Yankees center fielder Aaron Judge which I know sounds weird he's played right field the last few years but he's moving to center now because of Soto and Verdugo at least that's where he's projected and because of that he gets ranked here yeah Judge is disgusting he had the 62 home run year back in 2022 won the MVP last year only played 106 games had some injuries but in those 106 games 37 home runs 16 doubles 75 RBIs hitting 267 with a 406 on base 613 slugging 1019 OPS Aaron Judge is a freak He's incredibly good, worth all that money that they're paying him. He is the best center fielder in the game, as long as he plays that position, which it seems like he will. The guy's hit 99 home runs in two seasons. Who are you? What planet did you come from? You are the number one center fielder in the game, Aaron Judge.
even if I hate the Yankees. So there they are, my rankings for the best center fielders in Major League Baseball this upcoming season. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Down in the comment section below, does Trout deserve to drop? Is Aaron Judge the number one center fielder? Let me know down below, and I'll reply to a bunch of you. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you, especially on Christmas Day with the top 50 players in the league. And remember to follow me on my social media, at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in the description. Big shout out to all the amazing support you guys have been showing. Big shout out to everybody in the comment section getting mad at me. I still appreciate you even watching the video and sharing your opinion. But we're at the end, so you know the drill from here on out. This is going to be the playlist of the 12 days of MLB rankings for this year, and this will be the most recent upload of the series, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Bye!